Hi, I'm Dr. Kaplan from Helios Telemedicine for Men. If you've been watching my videos, you've seen me talk about exercise helping raise testosterone levels and how normal testosterone levels are vital for good health and weight management. I'd like to spend some time telling you about how it does that, which exercises may be the most effective, how long the testosterone boost lasts, how obesity and age affect this process, and when, why, and what happens when one goes to extremes of exercise. I'm not a fitness guru. Most of the information for each video in this short series came from two papers which will be cited at the bottom of the accompanying text. This is a big topic, so let's get started. It's been known for a long time that testosterone levels rise with exercise and that the amount depends on factors like age, body weight, exercise type, intensity, duration, and involved muscle type. We also know that this rise is temporary and will fall to pre-exercise levels after a recovery period, but that if the intensity and duration are increased, the recovery period and elevation in testosterone level may be prolonged for a few hours. Unfortunately, baseline testosterone levels are not affected by exercise for the vast majority of exercisers. So why do it if the benefits of exercise on testosterone don't last? That temporary rise leads to increased protein synthesis and muscle building and increased strength and power as well as increased insulin sensitivity. It also stimulates the bone marrow to make more hemoglobin and red blood cells, increasing oxygen carrying capacity and improved aerobic and anaerobic performance. Additionally, energy burned with exercise can contribute to loss of fat weight with its health benefits. When talking about exercise, we divide the topic into two basic forms, endurance, and resistance. Endurance exercise is aimed at cardiovascular conditioning by raising heart and breathing rates for a period of time with activities like running, cycling, swimming, and rowing. There are a minimum thresholds for intensity, duration, or a combination of them for testosterone levels to rise, and they fall back to baseline in about an hour of cessation. Resistance exercise targets skeletal muscle building and includes activities like free weights, weight machines, jumping, sprinting, and exercises that uses one's own body as weight. Of these, free weights seems to have the greatest effect. The increased testosterone levels are dependent upon the amount of muscle mass involved. It usually falls to baseline in about 30 minutes after stopping, but can be prolonged by increasing intensity, duration, or reducing the recovery time between sets. In fact, a combination of moderate intensity, involvement of more muscle groups, increasing duration of sets, and shortening the periods of rest between sets may be able to prolong the rise in testosterone by as long as 48 hours. Okay, so how does all this work? We know that LH from the pituitary gland increases with exercise and stimulates the testes to make and release testosterone. But the testes usually take about 45 minutes to respond to LH. And exercise-induced increases in testosterone begin at the same time as the LH increases. So the hypothalamic pituitary testis axis cannot be the only factor. So what's really doing it? First, Exercise causes a release of catecholamines like adrenaline, and those directly stimulate the testes to release testosterone. Second, the blood flow to the liver decreases with exercise, reducing the breakdown of circulating testosterone and raising the overall testosterone level. Then, aerobic and anaerobic exercise durations increase. That's when the LH stimulation production and release of the testosterone comes into play. On the negative side, exercise stress causes the release of cortisol, which directly reduces testosterone production and will become important in the next video. Obesity also confounds the rise of testosterone. Obesity-caused inflammatory factors have been shown to blunt the amplitude of LH pulses with exercise. 
aromatase enzymes in the fat cells convert some of the rising testosterone into estradiol. Finally, increased levels of a fat cell produced hormone called leptin also disrupts testosterone production. As we age, a man's testosterone slowly falls as the lytic cells in the testes cannot produce as much testosterone in response to LH stimulation. This results in a loss of muscle mass, an increase of fat mass, reduced physical performance, and an increased risk of cardiovascular and other chronic diseases. It also results in reduced exercise-induced testosterone increases regardless of exercise form, duration, or intensity when compared to younger adults. There is some variation when it comes to exercise-induced changes in baseline testosterone levels. They don't change for younger, normal weight men doing normal levels of exercise. They may be a little higher than their sedentary age-matched cohort for older men who have been engaged in lifelong exercise routines. The baseline levels do rise in obese men who start consistent exercise programs, but we don't know if this is due to the exercise itself or due to the exercise-induced weight loss with its resultant decrease in testosterone suppression. We will talk about what happens to testosterone levels in those competitive athletes and those exercises who go to extremes in my next video. Until then, please visit my website at www.heliostelemedicine.com to watch other videos, read my blog posts and frequently asked questions, or to make an appointment to see me. Thanks for your time and attention. Bye for now.